All right, well, against Fiji, folks, these two teams have not played each other for a wee while. We are going to go through some squads, predictions, stats, and uh, you guys can let us know your thoughts on how the uh, the game this Saturday may go. The Fiji side was named a bit later than everybody else, hence the kind of lateness of this video. And I should say, if you guys want any British and Irish Lions gear, uh, check the link down in the description. They were having 70% off some of the items. Why not get yourself some kit, man? I am known to purchase rugby gear every now and again. So, um, yeah, it's not a bad vice to have, the spending of money on rugby gear. Um, Ireland, like I said, haven't played Fiji for ages. Uh, 2017, 23-20, I believe, is the most recent result. A little bit of an escape at the end uh, for Ireland in that game. I had to look it up because I couldn't remember it off the top of my head. Ian Keatley apparently kicked a couple of late penalties uh, to win that one. But they've only played each other four times, 2017, 2009, 2002, and uh, 1995. Every single game being played in Dublin, as far as I'm aware. Um, wonder if one of these days we can get the Irish to head out to Fiji. Uh, that'd be certainly something. But um, yeah, this one is on uh, from Dublin this, uh, this Saturday. And um, undefeated in terms of their head-to-head -head record and number one in the world. It kind of makes sense that Ireland are the favourites for this one. However, they have rotated their squad around a wee bit. Uh, Andy Farrell said in the pre-match press conference stuff that a few of the players have been rotated. There's a few guys banged up with kind of niggling injuries. So it's time to um, yeah to give some other guys some minutes. Basically, Lochman comes into the 23 uh, at loose head. Rob Herring's up from the bench to start at hooker. And Tiger Furlong... Continues on at tight head and he gets the captain the side for the first time. So big congratulations to Big Tig. Uh, Kieran Treadwell is also up from the bench to, um, to to get a start, basically, which is good news for him. Still kind of early on in his Ireland career, isn't he? So it's good for him to get uh, the number four jersey on his back, which means Tiger Furlong moves to the now vacated five jersey with James Ryan getting the rest. Uh, so it's a pretty tidy look at type 5, if not the most experienced type 5 you've ever seen. But, I mean, it's not like these are a bunch of kind of debutantes. So uh, it's still it's still a strong look in type 5. Uh, Doris, Timoney, and Conan is a very interesting looking back row. I mean, Doris has generally been playing number 8 and kind of been putting Jack Conan out of a job in terms of that starting position. But uh, it's good to see Jack Conan back in at number 8. Uh, he played in that 2017 game against Fiji, so he's been there and done this before. Uh, Nick Timoney, man, I love the dude. He's a tackling machine. If you guys have watched this channel for any length of time, you will know I have the utmost for respect for any player who just makes tackle after tackle, and that certainly is Nick Timoney. And uh, we all know what Kalen Doris can do. Big old leg drive, so um, yeah, should make for an interesting... Uh, Ford Pack January from the Irish. Uh, Jameson Gibson Park pairs up with Joey Carberry. Both those guys were on the bench last week, so they are getting starts this week. I did think Gibson Park added that kind of injection of pace and uh, distribution when he came on last week, so uh, good for him. And Joey Carberry just needs minutes, man. They're kind of hard to come by with Johnny. And uh, again, Andy Farrell mentioned in the press conference that Johnny Sexton is just not going to surrender that number 10 jersey to the next up and coming guy. So whoever's going to take it from him is going to have to earn it. In all likelihood with Johnny being captain, you're going to have to wait till he retires. But um, yeah, Joey needs some minutes. So we'll see if Joey is able to pull the strings in this one. McCloskey and Henshaw is the midfield. Really happy for Stuart McCloskey because he got a start last week and then went off real early. Another guy who I really just want to see get some game time into him because I love watching him for Ulster. He's such a big man. And um, he went off early, so it's good to see it wasn't anything major. He's back playing alongside a now fit again Robbie Henshaw. So that's uh, an aggressive looking midfield. Balakoon and Hansen are still on the wings. And Jimmy O'Brien, who was a bit of a, you know, made a bit of a cameo last week, but earlier than expected, played really well. So he's at fullback, so good to see him get a reward for that as well. Uh, not many guys put Hugo Keenan out of a job for a week. Keenan, I think, is one of those guys getting a wee rest. Even though he's not played much rugby, still a bit banged up apparently. So um, yeah, good to see Jimmy O'Brien as another one getting some game time. Uh, Bench-wise, Sheehan, Healy, and O'Toole. Uh, so that's Sheehan down to the bench. Prendergast and Max Deegan. A few of these guys played in that Irish A-side, right? Craig Casey, Jack Crowley, and Gary Ringrose. So um, yeah, it's a it's a good mixture. Obviously, some of the, the kind of first choice players are not playing in this game. But I mean, it's a, certainly a good test of of where the Irish side is at because, I mean, Andy Farrell seems to have a pretty good knack of balancing, like, when to put players in and 
you know, went to, to play the top side. I mean, I would have said after last year, he was a little bit conservative in terms of not rotating too much, but I don't know. I guess when, you, when you're when you winning, you've got the confidence to be able to do that. So now that things are kind of embedded with the first choice guys, he's able to kind of uh, give some of the other guys a bit more time. Uh, for the Fijians, they've made a few changes for the side that lost last week against Scotland, but it's the same front row, Maui Matavesi and Solo. They acquitted themselves relatively well, although the Scots did score a couple of kind of set-piece tries from scrums, eh? With a, a pretty dominant, if not like utterly dominant, like going forward scrum is just able to set up the platform for the backs, right? So that's one area they will need to um, to probably step up. And Asila Sila comes in in the second row. And Rotosolia, uh, the big lock, continues on for a second test. He had a pretty eventful game last week. If you didn't watch it, he essentially got a yellow card within a minute on his debut. He scored a try and he tackled Adam Hastings so hard that Adam Hastings is now out of the Scotland squad. So... Yeah, talk about an eventful debut for um, for Rotu Rotu Solia. Uh, the outside, outside backs, the uh, back three is Tuisu, Botia, and Mata. So that's the same uh, back row that played last week. Um, Tuisu was real physical, which kind of is to be expected. Botia, uh, if you've watched any of the French rugby, you know, generally plays in the back line in the midfield, but he's uh, been playing Lucy uh, as well, so he's got a bit of background with that. So um, you have to watch him, and then uh, Viliami Matza with that offloading game of his is always certainly one to watch as well. Uh, Lomani and Tella is the 19 combo. Pleased that Tella is the 10. Uh, remember last week he was only on the bench because he had had an issue by like losing his passport when they were in their prep camp, so he had to travel late to join up with the squad. But he, I think, is their best in terms of kind of consistent distributing 10 like able to pull the strings 10 i mean ben volavola is still on the bench but i much prefer titi teller just quietly so uh yeah I'm, I'm pleased that he's got his passport he's getting the start and um yeah he's got a i don't know he's got a, a big game ahead of him because i mean at the world cup i'm pretty sure it's going to be teller if he's fit uh revolvo and nathan level are in the midfield so that's pretty aggressive looking although revolvo did kind of miss uh, one one-on-one -on -one tackle last week, which um, the likes of a McCloskey may have looked at if he's done his homework. Uh, Habosi on the left wing. If you haven't seen any Super Rugby in the year just gone, the guy was absolutely electric in, in super try-scoring form. So keep an eye out for him on the left. And uh, Wainingolo on the right wing. Uh, Places rugby in France also pretty dangerous. Tuisuvu moves to fullback in terms of the bench. Dolokoto uh, comes in as the replacement hooker. Natave, Atalifo, Rotuni Yarawa. Johnny Dyer is back in the 23 as well, which is good news. That guy is an absolute tackling machine. So hopefully he can kind of get on a wee bit early. Uh, Kurivoli, Volavola, and um, Kothangi will make his debut in the 23 jersey. Murimurivalu was ruled out with an injury in the last game. So... Yeah, it's kind of similar for both sides. They've both made a handful of changes without changing the whole squad. Um, some of the guys who are on the bench get starts. Some of the guys have come into the 23. So, yeah. Stats-wise, uh, I mean, it's harder to get stats with the Fijian guys because some of the games they don't keep the stats. But obviously, if you watch the Fijians, you know they big, play a big running game. It's, uh, it's pretty... Yeah, it's pretty ubiquitous with, with Fiji and rugby, isn't it? I mean, they were very dangerous last week against Scotland, as they showed. Uh, but they didn't just score, like, a try out on the right wing. They scored one, like I mentioned, this debutant lock, powered over from a meter up. So, you know, they, they, they can just kind of brute force as, as well as just kind of pure skills game. Uh, but Ireland, I mean, generally, they're going to make you play in your own half. They're going to make you play with as little ball as possible. I mean, the South African game was a little bit of an exception, and Ireland didn't dominate the position and territory, but generally across 2022, that's an area Ireland likes to dominate. And also their mall, man. I mean, Ireland have scored mall tries against New Zealand. They've scored mall tries against France. I think they're the only one to do it against France and South Africa. And none of those sides... I mean, New Zealand may be a little bit susceptible this year, but certainly France and South Africa do not concede many mall tries. So... One would assume if they can do it to France and South Africa, they can probably do it to Fiji. So that may be the kind of area they look to target, but we'll see. We may just see Ireland chuck it around. We'll see if they try to play the Fijian game against the Fijians. Um, so yeah, it's on at Dublin. It's on at the Aviva. It's one o'clock. Is it afternoon kickoff? Matthew Reynal is the ref. Um, the average score across the four games the Fijians and the Irish have played 
Uh, it's 43-13, so it tends to be pretty lopsided. But as I mentioned, there is one very close result in here, and that's 2017, which is the most recent, but ain't all that recent. Um, the bookies have got the Irish by 27, and the rugby forecast algorithm has got the Irish by 28. So a first place in the rugby world rankings Irish side against an 11th place Fijian side. Ireland are predicted to uh, to get it done relatively comfortably. But um, man, rugby's a funny game. I'm sure there'll be some surprising moments coming forth for us. You guys, let us know your thoughts. How well do you reckon this one is going to match up? Do you think Ireland is going to be way too good at home? Can you see the Fijians throwing a few surprises their way? You guys, let us know your thoughts. And um, if you're in the States, you want to watch it, Flow Rugby, all the Autumn Games, Autumn Nation Series. Happy days. Check it out. Take care, guys.